In this video I'm going to show you how I make my recipe for Wakatu Burst. It's a standard pale ale but I'm not adding bittering hops at the start. I'm doing it all as late addition hops using a technique called hop bursting. The first step is to heat up the stripe water in the hot liquor tank. This needs to be up at 74 degrees so that when it's entered into the mash tun and mixed with the grains it'll come out at around about 66.7 degrees. Here I'm weighing out the grains I use in the recipe. I'm using a mixture of different types of malt, uh, primarily pale malt but with some torrefied wheat and some crystal malt added as well. The strike water is now up to temperature, so I need to add that into the mash tun. I'm measuring that out accurately using a measuring jug. I'm giving the grains a good mix up, make sure they're all intermixed before they go into the mash tun. The next step is to pour them straight into the mash tun on top of the strike water that's already in there. Once all the grains are in, it's important to give it a good stir round. We want to make sure there's no lumps at all in the mash. I'm using a HERMS, which stands for Heat Exchange Recirculating Mash System. That'll move the liquid out of the mash tun through a heating coil and back into the top of the mash tun. It helps with keeping the liquid at the right temperature and also filters it to make sure your beer is extremely clear. I'm setting up the temperature probe now and putting in the tube to allow the liquid to come back in the top of the mash tun. So the electric pump is on now and we have liquid coming out the bottom of the mash tun, going through the Herms coil and into the top again through this pipe. You can just see the liquid coming out the pipe in the corner. Just a quick check of the mash pH to see if it's within the right range. So we're up and running with the mash and the first step is going to be 60 minutes. So while that's happening I'm going to heat up some more water in the hot liquor tank that I can use during the sparge process. So one hour later and the first step is complete. And I want to carry out what's called the mash out. So I'm going to raise the temperature over a period of about 10 minutes using the Herms system. While the Herms takes care of the mash out, I'm now going to get ahead of the game and weigh out the hops I'm going to need. Because I'm using the hop bursting technique, I need to use quite a lot of hops. They're all being weighed out now, ready. Normally your bittering hops are added at the start of the boil. It means that there is plenty of time for the hops to isomerize and get all the bitterness out of the hops. By doing it this way and adding them late though, we need to use a lot more to get the appropriate bitterness, but it shouldn't be quite as harsh a bitter taste. The mash is now complete and the next step is to start to drain the wort directly into the kettle slowly. I'm going to be rinsing the grains using hot water, also known as sparging. This should pull out all of the fermentable sugars possible. Ideally hot water will be going into the top of the mash tun at the same rate as it comes out of the tap underneath. So now we've got hot liquor coming from the hot liquor tank down through the sparge arm which gently rotates and distributes the water over the grains without hopefully disturbing them. It then trickles through the grain bed, uh, taking with it hopefully all the fermentable sugars and out into the kettle. Once the element's covered with liquid we can turn it on and start the boil process. 
the whole sparge process can take quite a while so obviously I've just shortened it here so we can see here that we've got the uh, sight glass going up to show that we've got more liquid going into the uh, kettle. So we're now towards the end of the sparge process I'm just going to take a little sample and measure the specific gravity using a refractometer just to make sure we're still pulling some sugar out. So we're currently showing a gravity of about 1.015 I'm expecting the end of the running gravity to be about 1.010, so we're not far from the end. So with the sparge process complete now, I take one final gravity reading to get the gravity before boil. As soon as it comes to a rolling boil, I'll start the timer going. I'm going to boil for 70 minutes today, but the hops aren't going in until the last 20 minutes. I've shortened the sequence again and here we are now with 20 minutes to go and the protoflock and uh, hops are going in. The protoflock helps grab all the proteins that were left over from the sparge, from the malt, put them into lumps and hopefully they'll drop to the bottom of the kettle and not make it anywhere near the fermenter. With 15 minutes boil time remaining I put in the immersion chiller. I'm not using it yet but it's just to make sure it's all sanitised for the last 15 minutes. Here we are in the last few seconds of the boil. So with the boil complete, I take the final gravity reading, which is coming out at 1.055. That's slightly higher than anticipated. I've been a little bit more efficient than normal. So now we need to chill the water as quick as possible. I do this by turning on the tap, and the immersion chiller will do its uh, job. The hot water coming out of the chiller can now be used to sanitise the fermenter. Just going to close up the fermenter and give it a good shake to distribute the sanitising uh, solution all the way through it. Some gentle stirring, but it's important not to splash at this stage, will recirculate the wort through the immersion chiller and speed up the chilling process. Once it's cooled, we can now drain it from the kettle directly into the fermenter. I use a fairly coarse sieve, uh, which just filters out any of the large lumps of hops that manage to make it out of the kettle, just to keep them out of the fermenter. Just waiting for the last few drops to come out of the kettle. The last stage is to add some yeast. We can't have beer without yeast and here we're using a Nottingham style dry yeast. Some people are advocates of rehydrating the yeast before use. I've tried it both ways, rehydrating and pitching dry, and I don't notice any major difference to be honest. So I reduce the number of steps and just pitch dry. So the yeast is in and will start to do its stuff very soon and now sealing up the fermenter ready to put it inside my fermentation chamber. The fermentation chamber allows me to very accurately control the temperature of the fermentation. There's a thermo well inside the fermenter and I put inside the, a thermo probe within that which will actually test the temperature of the liquid not just the environment it's in. That's the thermo probe being inserted into the thermo well now. Final step is to close up the chamber and let the temperature control chamber keep the water within the right temperature range. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in the fermentation chamber, I'll be uploading a video about that soon. And I'll also upload a video on the, the tasting when we get that far. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.